Hi everyone, today I'll be presenting my work, uh, Better to Ask in English, Cross-Lingual Evaluation of LLMs for Healthcare Queries. So, uh, so I'll just first start with the motivation and the challenges. So LLMs have potentially enhanced access to education, healthcare, digital literacy among general public. But in, specifically in healthcare, they can be used for uh, answering queries, support clinical decision making, and enhancing li uh, health literacy among general population. However, uh, adoption of LLMs in high risk domains such as healthcare brings two significant challenges. First in is ensuring safety because it's a high risk domain. And second is addressing language disparity. And because of absence of any cross-lingual framework that could assess the knowledge capabilities of LLMs designed for high-risk domain, we were motivated to propose this work. So here are the contributions of, of our work. We introduced a novel framework called Xling Eval, which, uh, which can be used for uh, healthcare domain. Uh, we also introduce a benchmark data set called Xlink Health, which contains a question and answer pair for health, uh, healthcare domain in four most spoken languages in the world, English, Hindi, Chinese, and Spanish. And finally, we perform an extensive set of cross-lingual evaluation on four most spoken languages in the world with three uh, different uh, large language models. So I'll first cover the Xlink Health benchmark data set. So we propose this cross-lingual healthcare benchmark data set for uh, consists of, of three already publicly available data sets called HealthQA, LiveQA, and MedicationQA. Uh, these data sets are publicly available and highly cited in this domain, but a problem with them is that the, all of these are in English. But a good thing with the, all of these three data set is that uh, the questions closely resemble by, uh, of those typically asked by general population. So the questions that are asked are relevant to a broader audience and the answers that are provided by experts are long form answers. So they are rich in context and the information. Uh, these are some statistics related to the original data set. As you can see, uh, there are, uh, these are quite large data set, but also uh, if you look at the number of words per answer, you can see a quite uh, a difference in the uh, number of words, which also uh, gives a rich context on different types of lengths of answer that can be provided. Uh, how we create a multilingual version of it is that we perform translation experiment on top of all of these three data sets, and we also performed a human evalu validation step uh, uh, so that we could ensure that the translated versions are of high quality. Now uh, I'll just talk about the uh, proposed framework. So we propose this framework called Xlink Eval, which uh, uh, can be used for assessing the abilities of LLMs in high risk domains such as healthcare. Our uh, proposed framework consists, uh, consists of three criteria: correctness, consistency, and verifiability. So correctness here refers to models ability to provide responses that exhibit factual correctness and comprehensively addresses the query. Consistency refers to models ability to produce consistent responses uh, uh, with, uh, for identical queries reflecting high similarity in lexical, semantic and topical aspect. And finally, verifiability refers to models capability to authenticate accurate claims and clearly distinguish between correct and errorous responses. So what we are trying to do with this framework is to mimic real world healthcare conversation settings. What we are trying to do is to ensure, uh, uh, introduce uh, criteria that can mimic the interaction that you have with your doctors. Uh, using this framework, we conducted evaluation across four languages and two uh, models, GPT-3.5 and Meadow Alpaca. We also did uh, some experiments with uh, GPT-4, which are in the appendix section uh, of our work. So talking about the correctness criteria, it pertains to the accuracy, comprehensiveness, and contextual appropriateness of LLM's responses in healthcare inquiries. So what we are trying to do is to assess the answers given by large language models as compared to the expert answer that are uh, provided in our benchmark data set across two key relationships. First is contradiction, and second is comprehensiveness and appropriateness. 
So, comprehensiveness refers to the details that are provided in the answers and whether they cover the, ex uh, the expected topics and points. Appropriateness gauges the contextual relevance to the queries that have been asked. And finally, contradiction refers to the incorrect or contrasting information. So the idea behind introducing these uh, uh, criteria was to assess uh, the difference between LLM's responses and expert responses in a more nuanced manner, in a more qualitative manner. And these are the four labels that we introduced for this correctness criteria. And these compare the relationship between LLM answers and the ground truth answers. Uh, the evaluation setup for this was that we first generated, uh, we first conducted an automated evaluation using LLMs because the, the, uh, this task is quite nuanced and the uh, relationship between these two answers are pretty complicated. But as a validation step, we also conducted human evaluation by recruiting doctors. So here are uh, a couple of results. Uh, if you are interested, you can look at our paper. There are a bunch of other things that we have done in this criteria. Uh, but as you can see uh, on the left, we have the percentages of answers that were rated as more comprehensive uh, uh, LLM answer as compared to the expert answer. For an example, we see that there was a, a dip of 38.62% in the more comprehensive label answered in Hindi with respect to English. And this trend was seen for other non-English languages as well. If you we look at the graph on the right, we have the number of contradictory answers, which means that the LLM answers were partially or completely incorrect to the one provided by experts. And we see that almost 9.6 times uh, uh, LLMs were, uh, produce more contradictory answers in Chinese with respect to English. And these uh, results were also similar for other labels and other data sets that we have in our benchmark data set. Now, talking about the consistency criteria, uh, what we're trying to gauge here is the coherence of LLM's generated responses at different temperature parameter of language model. If you are familiar with uh, language model, the temperature parameter controls the randomness of the output, uh, output text. So what we are trying to uh, gauge here is that if you try to give a similar query to a large language models multiple times, whether it tries, uh, gives a similar response or not, and how similar are those responses. Because similarity is quite nuanced and quite subjective, we uh, depend on three broad categories, surface level consistency, semantic level consistency, and topical consistency. And for each of these broad categories, we uh, depend on two automated uh, uh, metrics. So the idea was to not only compare the answers in a semantic manner, but also in, on a lexical level and a topical level to ensure that the answers are similar. If you look at the right, I'll just quickly go through uh, how we uh, did this uh, experiment. For each question in English and non-English languages, we prompted uh, the LLM with the same question 10 times at different temperatures. We used temperature as 0, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and 1. And uh, we generated 10 pairs, uh, 10 answers for each question. And we did a pairwise similarity comparison across all of these three broad categories. Here are a few results. Again, uh, we have a bunch of results in the paper if you are interested. So uh, we have three results for uh, different data sets, BERT score, similarity in LDA, which is the topical similarity, and then we have the sentence similarity. A common uh, uh, theme is that the, the low, uh, drop in metrics is way lower in English uh, with the increase in temperature, which is uh, which was obvious that if you increase the randomness, the similarity would decrease. But the decrease is way lower in English as compared to other languages. Also, uh, we have shown that in the paper, all these differences are significantly different, and we performed uh, ANOVA test and HST test on these. Lastly, talking about the verifiability criteria, Ag um, apart from the uh, two criteria that have been introduced, this is, more, uh, this is assessing LLM's ability in a more discriminative manner. So LLM acts as a discriminator where it tries to distinguish the uh, between correct and uh, irrelevant responses to a given query. So what we are trying to assess here is the knowledge or reasoning ability of LLMs. 
This is pretty similar to the natural language inference task that is uh, quite popular in NLP. What we do is that for each question, we give uh, an answer uh, and we try to uh, prompt LLM to gauge whether that answer is correct or not. Uh, a couple of results here. So uh, for this, we tracked accuracy, recall, precision, F1, and AUC. I'm just showing the results for F1. You can look at the paper for the rest of the results. We see that uh, there was a drop in almost 12.7% in F1 score in, in Hindi with respect to English. And we see a similar drop in Chinese when we compare it to English for these two different data sets. And results were pretty similar for other uh, metrics as well. So what are the implications and key takeaways? So first is that uh, our work shows uh, that uh, while the companies uh, talk about equity in services, our work shows that that's not the case, especially in healthcare domain. So besides developing LLMs that provide equitable service, we uh, propose that uh, the models that are being released by these companies should involve clear, uh, uh, clear communication about their abilities and the harms that they can cause. Uh, when we talk about futures of LLMs in healthcare, uh, of course, domain-specific uh, large language models have shown promise. Uh, but because the healthcare data uh, is uh, quite uh, low in uh, numbers, so we uh, propose that these LLMs can be augmented with knowledge bases, and we uh, propose that uh, the stakeholders should be in included at every step of data, uh, at every step of model deployment. And uh, finally, our work highlights the need for creating specialized metrics and evaluation strategies for high-risk domains such as healthcare. Other domains can be law, finance, et cetera. So that concludes uh, our presentation. Our data set is public, code is public, and you can read the longer version of paper on archive. And that's it. Thank you. Great.